Yo, welcome back to Minecraft with Justin and Ulam. So, in between episodes, I've done a bit more working on the house. Go ahead and show you it. I did, in the end, decide that, uh, because I looked up how the light spreading works, and, uh, if you're interested in using ice as windows, apparently ice will melt if the blocks adjacent to it have a light level of 11 or higher, or maybe it's 10. No, 12 or higher. So 11, I think, is okay. Anything higher than 11 is too much. Yeah, pretty sure. And so the issue uh, with putting a lantern as the central lighting source is that a uh, torch has, starts at 14 on, the, I think, the very block that it's placed, and then it goes lower for every block it has to travel, uh, with diagonals being a straight and then over, so it actually goes two down diagonally. Uh, up and down as well, so that meant that in order for the windows to not melt, I needed it to be pretty significantly higher up than what I initially had it, so that's why the house is quite a bit taller now, but I feel with uh, the other snow blocks I packed in at the right spots, it looks fine. It looks more like a snow house now than an igloo, but what can you do? And, as you can see, it uh, rained, which turned into snow due to the biome, which means we've got most of our coverage back. So, I've also gone ahead and not done much over here yet, because I figured the first things first was to finish digging this down, and as you can see, that put us right under this. Uh, I built this out enough that I think with this railing we should have nothing to fear from monsters. I mean, spiders could hypothetically slip over. But I don't think so either, because each of these, well, no, I guess that outer one, but the areas where they could, I think that that's occupying technically half a block there, so they probably shouldn't be able to slip through. And eventually I plan on putting a railway down through here so you don't have to walk, but uh, the reason we're not rendering over there, up there it finally kicks in, is because it is quite the walk over to the village, as it turns out. And uh, most of these places, well, some of the places you're seeing on the side where there's dirt, uh, there just was dirt, but in several of them, the, there would be like a little bit of coal or iron, so we've got quite a bit more uh, coal and iron to start us off with, and this will put us out here, which for right now, yeah, I'm just <laughs> making it like that in order to prevent villagers from getting in. Which isn't the greatest, but we'll work on something else later. So right now, that's getting us a tunnel all the way from our house over to basically where the end of the road is right here at this frozen river. Alright, so... I think first things first, part of the reason I brought the hoe over here is to try to improve their farms, because then I can just benefit from them. Uh... I also did go ahead and look up, it turns out what the Curse of Vanishing does to an item is if you die, it will vanish instead of drop. So don't be holding it when you die and fine. Plus it's a golden hoe, so its durability was never going to likely be high enough to matter that much anyway. So let's see. He's got a lantern in the middle. Which I'm sure is to double serve as both keeping the water from melt or from to freezing into ice, oops. and because higher light level encourages uh, the growth tick. So, given where they've got all these things, let's use shovel so that I can reclaim some of this snow. Let's see, and if it goes. Because right now he does have dirt right here, which we're going to match over here. So remove that. Well, we have one more. Place that with dirt. Let's see. And if it goes out to, then we'll copy that. So dig away that snow, that snow, that snow. Place with dirt, dirt. And you can make half. Huh. I didn't know you could make half blocks out of snow. Not sure if there's really any function to that. That's interesting to know, though, if we ever do come up with a function for it. All right, and this is probably the kind of block we'll... I don't know. Actually, I kind of like the snow being surrounding it. Plus, these blocks, by virtue of being sort of half blocks as stairs, 
I don't think they're possible to get snow on top of them, and I do kind of like the idea of the snow on top. All right, so what I've done in the interim is move this from the from part of the farm down to part of the outer area. That way it's over here next to the farm, but it's not taking up potential good farmland. I am thinking I might swap these two now i mean these two sh I, I don't remember exactly what the formula is for how far water makes farmland fertile but it probably off of just that reaches all the land yeah i think that this is i don't know if that's dry or oh no that's definitely dry all right well we'll certainly see if it's enough to reach these corners all right, well, it seems that that one just immediately changed. I guess that answers our question. It is indeed enough to reach those corners. All right, and we have some wheat seeds here that I guess we'll just sort of randomly plant. And if you'll pardon me for a moment, I'm going to go ahead and find some more seeds. Something I'll go ahead and mention as I'm taking out these plants looking for seeds, and as you can see, not getting very lucky with it, is that I think one of the first things we're going to do once I feel that we've gotten the two farms to a good spot is work on their roads. Now, there is something of a conundrum with regards to the roads, because you kind of need the roads before all the other buildings, but once you start building the other buildings, you're going to start realizing that maybe the roads were not as well placed as you had hoped. I think the way I'm going to try to get around that is by doing a fair bit of plotting out. So not just refurbishing the roads as they are, although there will probably be plenty of that to do. I'm also going to... Uh, look up what the building types are for the village, plan for what buildings are going to go where, that way when I space out the buildings so that ideally none of their roofs are touching because I just, I don't really like that aesthetic, uh, we'll need roads to also be able to connect to all of them, you know. And so because all that is, because we kind of need, you know, the roads in order to have the buildings, but we also need the buildings to have the roads, I'm going to try to do all of that sort of just mentally by sizing it up. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing first and foremost before even setting pathways is just establishing uh, like planes of the town. Not making it all flat, mind you, but making it to where no roads look like this, you know? To where any road experiences a rise in elevation all at once, all across the three-way. And unfortunately, in order to make that work, that's going to take quite a bit of uh, leveling of, like, you know, places like exactly right there, and then like anywhere that's like here where it's like a two upgrade, how am I going to do that, you know? I'm going to have to just work it out and figure it out. Is that ready for harvest? We'll break one of them. Oh, yep, these potatoes. All right, so, yep. The, this is what potatoes that are ready for harvest. Okay, not that one, though. That one, though, I think. That is what potatoes that are ready for harvest look like. All right. Go ahead and replant some of these. Go ahead and... There's really, for any villager farm, what I've found is that there's no point in trying to set up a pattern yourself because the villagers will never abide by it. I thought that one might be ready. Uh, did I get seeds from that? And eh, let's plant. No, we've planted plenty of potatoes. Let's swap that for a... See, all right, so we got one of those and seven potatoes. I think that the farmer that was offering for potatoes for emeralds was demanding a lot more potatoes than this. All right, so that's very nice looking. Ooh, apparently things have not been going good around here. Let's see, do I have any iron on me? Nope, sorry, bud. I'll have to try to remember to bring some iron when I come next time because he could use some repairing. Alright, but whereas this one looks like it does have, 
I don't remember what the term is, but uh, this kind of wood is, uh, you take an axe and right click on, uh, on just logs. So given this one actually has its border much better set up, let's go ahead and knock out this tree that's sort of getting in the way. Let's see, how do I want to get on top of it and dig down? All right. That'll work. Right, dig out this. And then dig straight down. All right, there we go. Just knock these out of the way. Get me out of here. All right, and the stuff that's bordering on it will disappear eventually. So, given this setup, I think... Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, once those leaves move back, I think I actually want to get rid of this tree, too. But, seeing as how these leaves could end up being connected to any of these trees around, and I really only want these two gone, let me just go ahead and manually get rid of these leaves. Alright, these leaves just go away, fine, I'll knock them out myself. There we are, and... Oh, I betcha they were being sustained by the fact that these are technically still logs. Don't need to be living ones in order to sustain it clearly. There we go. Knock that out. The rest of these leaves on the ground should go away. Some of those that are far enough from the trunk will go away. All right. So what I think we're gonna do here is actually go ahead and extend this one more back, which means let me go ahead and take that. Oh, no, wait, no, that one's fine. All right, and then, well, no, wait, right, because that's one of the ones that's facing up. All right, so we've got our stripped, that's what it was called. So stripped spruce logs, replace that, versus wood. So the stripped spruce log will now go here facing up, and here facing up. Uh-oh, sun's getting low. Uh, let me snag someone's, well... No, no, stay away. <laughs> My bed. I'm taking it. There we go. <laughs> Sorry there, buckaroo. I needed a way to zip the night away right quick. Sorry for stealing your bed for the night. Let's see. And then we'll put spruce wood there. All right, we need two more. Let's see, so if I put a log there, and a log there, it's not technically, hello, can I help you, okay, yep, there's a zombie kid over there, ah, get away, stay away, where is he, there he is, die, There we go, goodness. Yeah, I didn't get Monster I didn't deserve Monster Hunter. I missed every hit. I'm just lucky I didn't accidentally hit that villager. <laughs> I would have been in serious trouble. Well, from above, those two look right. It's just, for some reason... I don't know, do you hit it with... Whoops. No! That's the wrong click. Do you hit it with that again? No. Eh, whatever, no one will notice. I'll notice. Place those. Actually, the one water right there should be enough. Go ahead and use the hoe on these. We're gonna move where that is. Uh, let's see. And that. There we are. So, I don't have enough to make one more fence, but I don't actually have the crafting bench over here in order to one over and then down and down, and it'll just have to be missing that for right now. And then we're going to actually replace this with the composter. Boom! There we are. 
Hmm. There we are. So with those two down now, let's put seeds and potatoes back on the bar. Plant the two seeds that we've got right now. And then we'll plant the potatoes we've got. There we are. And I think that one's actually ready for harvest, so we'll go ahead and grab that. That one's still got green on it, so that one's not ready. I don't think that one's tall enough. Yeah, I don't think any of the other potatoes are ready. All right, well, don't even need to eat right now, so we'll leave that there. All right, all right, all right. So, note to self, need to try to remember to bring another fence post so that we have that connected. All right. So, with those two farms set up, now it will mostly be a matter of both time and patience. As the farmers will not grow any better because of these improved farms, but with the larger farms, there should be more opportunity for me to be able to come in and harvest. Some is this one? No, I think that green is still not ready. Is this one? No, not quite, I don't think. Maybe. I think I only got one potato, so probably not. Because if we're going to make any decent trades with these guys, we're going to need to kick this farming stuff into overdrive just a bit. Ah, but it just occurred to me, I never got around to mentioning that bit about uh, efficiency. So, this one farm uh, can actually run two farmers, probably, given the... I mean, it's really not big enough to be worth bothering with two farmers on it. On the other map that I was testing stuff on uh, previously, I built noticeably larger farms, which was probably part of why they were able to run multiple farmers on them. I don't know that multiple farmers would really be useful here. So in, we might actually go ahead and build even more farms then in that case. Let's see. So what size is this one? This is a five by five. How big did we make the other one? Because I'll try to take that into account then when we're doing what I was saying about planning out the rest of the... All right, so this one's also five, but then it's by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So five by five and five by eight. All right. With one having snow blocks and the other having... And these might be large enough, yeah, to go ahead and put another composter over here. And eventually, as we grow the village, I'll expand this square a little bit more. Or at least I'll try, because the issue is this farm's actually a little close to it in order for me to expand it from this still being the center. And part of the issue is, I don't know if you can harvest the bell such that you can then move it. But uh, that's going to be something to look up clearly and figuring out positionings of, you know, if I want to expand it, then that's part and parcel of what I'm talking about, about needing to space it out from other buildings and then roads which, again, will largely hinge on being able to harvest that bell so that I can move it over one. But, looking at our time, I think this is probably going to be where we'll call it. We made a good bit of progress, got some farming stuff underway. It's not really in a place that's convenient to our home, uh, which I should go ahead and mention. Uh, part of the main reason that I'm going ahead and letting the home be that far away is that uh, whenever raids happen... Uh, I think even just off the baseline, uh, Wave 3 starts having those behemoths that can do actual block damage, and I'd rather my personal home not be potentially in the way of such damage. So, uh, we may also go ahead and establish somewhere in here a little home away from home sort of space, while most of, so that, you know, especially for how much work we're going to need to be doing here. And it won't be that big of a trip once I do put down a uh, powered rail system, such that we can just hop in a cart and zip back and forth. But, all that aside, thanks for watching and we will catch you next time. 
Yo, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and leave a comment. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want YouTube to let you know when more uploads arrive. I've put links in the description for if you want to follow the channel's Twitter or Facebook, as well as a link to the channel's Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.